point out that there was evil Swedish-Russian aggressions against the poor Lithuanians, and uh, the Lithuanians asked us, asked the Polish army to help them against the Russians, and, uh, and most of Lithuania has been saved. Uh, maybe verify this with Lithuania. So that is uh, maybe something that we can talk about at some other point. However, in the meantime, Alexa Van has got himself, uh, he needs to start consolidating his assets. He has an idea. He's gone plutocratic trade and administrative trade, of course, is a very standard one here for the Hansa. Uh, pretty much uh, pretty much standard stuff going on there. We haven't actually changed any of the uh, ideas in this particular version of the beta. From the la last time, of course, we had... Uh, Three small ideas that were changed somewhere in the uh, in the system. One of them was, I think, we changed some of the aristocracy ideas as well as the diplomatic ideas, and I believe we changed knights. Not entirely sure. Yeah, of course, it's not going to show up on this one because they're a republic. But you know, uh, there's there's a bunch of stuff going on. All right, so which king is on his final part? All right, so the war is in uh, the war. Oh my God, Lithuania. Lithuania has been gutted, completely been gutted, completely been torn asunder, and Sweden, Russia, and Poland have been completely crushed. Completely crushed within uh, the grand scheme of things. They were pretty big before, but uh, Russia took massive territory here, all the way down here. It's just, yeah, it's just fucking up, but I just love and... Uh, yeah, this is Livonian order even. Lithuania has only two territories. My god. <laughs> and I think they also they even have a reform problem now as well. That is... Uh, well, uh, Nuzia, I know you joined in late, but uh, I'm afraid that you're going to have to join in for some other country somewhere in the near future because uh, I don't think Lithuania is going to stand very long. But that Poland, that Poland is astoundingly strong now. Having a total, uh, it's 45,000 troops, and are they, you know, they're not, they're, they're obviously Eastern technology, but uh, can they westernize at the drop of hat there? Right now they're Administrative Technology 9, whereas uh, Bohemia, actually, let's go and take a look who is the most advanced nation in the world. It's actually Brandenburg. So Brandenburg could technically be the catalyst of technological advance in Poland. Poland is only three uh, behind, so if they if they just start investing all of their stuff, all their stuff in upgrading all of these territories, and see if they can actually integrate and uh, convert everybody, then uh, they can have the potential of westernizing very very quickly. So that could be uh, potentially potentially very strong. So the real question is, what is still available for players to pick? Well, uh, Manchu is still available up here. We got uh, yeah, that is it really. All the major nations, that is pretty much it. There's a couple of Southeast Asian nations that are still available down here, but they are not all that strong. We've got Sean, Athenaeu down here, Tibet still available, but I just, yeah. right now, we may actually see players that are knocked out to move on to nations in the New World, because we still have the Shawnee running around. And if we move over towards the Shawnee, they actually have. Uh, 34,000 troops. So there's a lot of potential there maybe to play as a Shawnee and maybe go for westernized Shawnee. Who knows? But they could be definitely be a powerhouse within the new world, but we'll check that out later or at least somewhere down the line. Brandenburg, are they actually looking to take that territory here in Ostpreußen? The other half is actually Prussian, but she always denies it. But, uh, you know, I know, I know she is, but whatever. Anyway, uh, that's what they need in order to form Prussia. So uh, we will see whether or not that is going to be uh, the case. Hungary uh, will not be uh, annexed or be dealt with this entire session. Birken, who is uh, playing uh, also in this game, is currently not in the office, which means that they will get he will get a uh, a free pass in this particular session. Will not be annexed. Will not be attacked. Hungary pretty much does whatever the hell they want in the AI. But it means that Austria will not have the opportunity to expand all that much, and that means that they may have to go and look over towards other territories. Possibly Ferreira. Possibly Mantua. We may actually see uh, Austria going for, for their first war, but maybe Savoy. Who knows? They are the emperor, uh, which means they can't really all do all that much. So they could go and look over towards the Ottomans, or maybe another war with Sweden and Denmark. There's a lot of potential there, but uh, we shall see whether or not that is the case or not. I'm quickly going to look over. I have another Skype message. Nothing. 
scroll up here. Yeah, nothing there. So, sacrifice going uh, against uh, the Livonian Order. To be expected, to be honest, they want to they want to consolidate the territory as much as possible before uh, Sweden and Denmark become these Baltic superpowers. Japan uh, at war, Bushoff with the Netherlands. My God. We have an HRE army going on here. All right, so the Netherlands has got all of their vassals in, and it looks like Bohemia and Brandenburg have got to go full-on assault here on towards the Netherlands. This could be exceptionally painful. What do they want exactly? The conquest of Aachen, and uh, that is one of the territory here. Where is Aachen? Where is Aachen? I'm probably looking at it right now. Probably being a dumbass. Aachen, where are you? Köln, uh, regardless. The Netherlands are, in, are at a massive disadvantage. They don't have enough troops. They have, uh, they got these guys down here. They have, do, do they have a technological advance? Let's take a look here. Ooh, I don't see them winning this, even though the dice rolls are not going to be in their favor. Who do they have as allies, though? They have no allies to speak of. The Dutch can't really do anything. They were allied with the Dutch, uh, with the Danish before, but that was before they turned into a. Uh, that's when they were still Burgundy, and yeah, I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Bohemia really taking it, uh, taking it strongly. Still having a six percent war score over here. Fifty thousand troops are descending on top, plus another, uh, another twenty-six thousand from Brandenburg. And Brandenburg, uh, what sort of ideas do they have? They got economic and defensive ideas, plus, of course, those crazy uh, Brandenburgian, uh, Brandenburgian things like 20% uh, morale and that sort of thing. So, uh, Prussian and all that. So, let's see whether or not this is going to be uh, a war. And it's obviously been sanctioned by the Emperor. The Emperor's like, you know what, you can take that territory. Bohemia, uh, Bohemia thinks that they should be able to take it away from them. Um, just quickly look at yeah, there it is Aachen of course I'm being a dumbass this is that little that little sprite of the city uh, going over it and it does look it does look it does look like Bohemia managed to tech up right there and then and the Dutch are actually quite high in technology at the moment they got a 10 11 11 12 and uh, that is mainly to do to a certain new system that's been introduced so what we have is this little system right here. This is called the new system that we are calling Fanatic Focus. So basically what you do is, if you turn yourself into... This is this is completely bare bones at the moment, I will look that point out. It is, uh, it is not worked out, it's very, very basic as of right now, but it is in the game. And it's a new Fanatic system, which basically means if you change your nation's religion from Catholic to Reformed or something along those lines, what will happen there is that you can change things around significantly it means you get these fanatic points that you can add towards your uh, towards your nation right now the Netherlands is not getting all that much has 30 points uh, uh, currently saved up and they can spend that on a monthly basis on either trade war or stability you can put it on all three if you really want to in this case war would possibly be a good idea because it gives you plus 15 armies for uh, on armies and navies however it's going to go for stability which lowers national revolt risk and diplomatic reputation and you could also go for trade which increase, increases your uh, global trade power and or trade steering like i said it's a very basic system at the moment it will be fleshed out in the, in the, in future uh, in future uh, updates again we don't know if this is going to be final it's just an idea that we're throwing at the wall see if it works or not and if it doesn't you know we'll remove it if it does it'll be a new system that may be or may not be introduced somewhere down the line and it's a pretty cool it's a pretty a pretty cool way of dealing with uh, reformation and uh, that sort of thing as uh, the Dutch are in fact performed within the Protestant Europe so uh, that allows them to uh, do a lot of very very interesting things the Dutch in the meantime ooh, do they have an ally there no it's just bar their um, their uh, their vassal but they want to keep the Dutch under control as much as possible may one of the reasons is they will get all this territory fairly soon they and the Dutch need to watch out and the French actually have uh, some sort of uh, uh, they actually have some sort of say in this because they are definitely would definitely be interested in this territory mainly because uh, the Dutch what they did was they vassalized all of this territory or at least turned them to a vassal hit the uh, create Dutch nation button and then 
well, pretty much uh, turn into a vassal. We've got a pretty decent big big fight going on here. The Dutch having some real problem here. Jos uh, van Troyen with 3-2-2 versus a 5-2-1. I don't see this happening. It's 40,000 troops right here. Uh, there's no crossing, even though this Hungarian is... Wow. Yeah, there we go. And the Dutch are falling back. Having 37,000 troops... And uh, having to fall back towards uh, Neves. There you go. That's one of the new systems that's being uh, being introduced into the future. Who knows when it's going to be uh, going to be done or if it's going to be added at all. But uh, if it is, then I'm sure you will be able to read more about it in a uh, dev diary somewhere in the future. And like we said, this is uh, these streams are pretty much designed around uh, seeing where the game is going and what we're doing in-house right now, especially with 22 in-house developers that are playing this session, trying out new mechanics, uh, trying to wiggle them way, way through to uh, uh, older mechanics and see how to work them all uh, out better and uh, that sort of thing. And as you can see, most of the world has been consolidated between uh, player nations at this point in time, so it's time for the Great Wars to start which is exactly the case. Uh, Nuzia at war. Crimean con conquest of Manchu. Lithuania has joined Crimea. And Crimea did take a couple of, uh, a little bit of territory there. Ukraine now has been formed. Are they going to try to feed a vassal of Russia? Interesting. It's a couple. Oh, all right. So they just turned it into, okay. So what he's done is he's created a couple of vassals here. And uh, he took a bunch of territory, tournament to vassals, so he don't doesn't have to deal with the um, uh, with the problem that is um, uh, that is overextension. So he will be able to integrate those sometime down the line later. France gets an event claim. France could potentially join this war. Still not doing anything with that. The Netherlands still at a major disadvantage. 727,000 troops here. A lot of them are, uh, are mercenaries, actually. Wow, that's a lot of cannons. Won't be able to do anything with that. Not versus these armies. Not versus these Brandenburg and armies down at the top. And, uh, Lithuania is pretty much de la Est. They haven't been vassalized, so the Pril is still pretty safe. But on the other side of the continent, the Dutch are really, really feeling it. And they were running a couple of simulations before the game, seeing whether or not the Dutch could uh, integrate Flanders somewhere in this particular session. But we didn't really see it happening. And the Dutch are pretty much holding back, hoping for this uh, to end. And maybe they were able to get Aachen. Maybe uh, Brandenburg is looking to get some more... Um, uh, they won't be able to do that. By the way, I don't have any input on this at all. It's just a pop-up because I can see exactly what the players are seeing. But uh, it looks like Brandenburg may be looking at Gelra to split the Netherlands ever so slightly and getting yet another fleet basing area here in the uh, North Sea so they can completely avoid Stuttgart and actually send something out into its new world. Uh, Brandenburg is not really looking to... I got naval ideas. A very interesting choice, actually. Very interesting choice. Could be interesting later on if they decide to go versus Denmark. But uh, all 400 of you that are watching right now, welcome. Welcome to the European Universalis for Wealth of Nation developer sessions that we have in uh, in office. And we've been having in office, actually, over the last four weeks. This is week number four. We hope that you've been enjoying it so far. And we're really starting to get into the meat of things. Speed of potatoes, really. And uh, we're starting to show off all these new features that are casually being added towards the beta in-house. And we're checking them out, whether or not they are useful or not. And removing them as such, or maybe adding them as such. Another fight going on here. This, this could actually be quite decent here for the Netherlands, as they do have... No, they're going to have to fall back. Not enough... Uh, Diplomacy there, and they're seeing more and more armies of Brandenburg moving in. And to be honest, what does Brandenburg have? 291 manpower. Bohemia is pretty low as well. Netherlands still has two or 20,000 troops. They could actually potentially do this. They have a lot more manpower available than the, uh, than the aggressors have. And they could actually do this if they work, if they work their magic. They got significant fleet power. They got 21 ships. They have the manpower to do something with this as long as they decide to fight back. I could actually see this, this, this particular war ending with the Brandenburgians and the, the Bohemians being fought all the way back. And the Dutch are actually adding more and more cannons towards their armies. And this could actually be quite interesting.